Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Deck Bricks. I'm Chris, and today we're going to be taking a brand new look at the new Ninjago Dragonstone Shrine. One of the most hyped and honestly best Ninjago sets that we've gotten in a long time. This is a beautiful dragon stone sculpture with a waterfall coming out of the mouth. I am so excited to dive into this because this is absolutely a treat. And you know what? Something special for this review. I actually was able to order all of the parts for the custom base that was sent out to some members of the LEGO Ambassador Network, which you can use to take the shrine, add it on top of it to really flesh out the scene in a full-on diorama display. And so, I'll be taking a look at both of those components together in this one video. Thank you so much, and let's jump on in to the Dragonstone Shrine. Okay, so this is the Ninjago Dragonstone Shrine. It retails for 120 US dollars and comes with 1,212 pieces, making it pretty good value price per part wise, and it also comes with a couple of different minifigures, including an exclusive version of Euphrasia appearing in minifigure form for the first time, aka the new Elemental Master of Wind, as well as Master Wu in a new outfit as well. All of the other minifigures are either repeats or amalgamations of minifigures that have come in prior sets, like Lloyd here, who is sporting armor for the first time in his Sensei Lloyd outfit, but for the most part is just using standard minifigure pieces, Lord Roz, who does appear in a couple of the other sets, and Kai and Nia, who are using their Season 1 Dragon's Rising outfits rather inexplicably, but for whatever reason they do not have the hood pieces and they have the hair exposed instead. Now, this is actually not all there is to it, to the set, because this is worth $120 for that set, but then here is a custom LEGO influencer base. So what's the story behind this? Well, earlier last month, influencers and YouTubers who make content based on Ninjago and LEGO were sent this base as well as the set early and a challenge to create something unique out of the parts in the set. Unfortunately, I did not receive one of these bases, but you know me, that is absolutely not going to stop me from building my own. And so taking a look at all of the incredibly detailed photos and videos posted on the internet from all of my other friends who are Lego YouTubers and Lego bloggers, I was able to piece this together. Now, the funny thing is, is that I tried to piece it together in studio, and then I actually issued a challenge on my Discord to piece it together as kind of a check to make sure that I did it right. And then somebody else also reverse engineered the model and posted free building instructions as well as a parts list, which that is the final version I've linked down in the description below because I feel like that one is the most accurate. It is really cool how I was able to send a prize to someone to make it. I did not expect anybody else to want to really make this, but I'm pleasantly surprised. I was not the only person who had the idea to reverse engineer near this. And again, the one in the description below is that final one, which was DM'd to me on Instagram by somebody who I actually met at Legoland Germany of all things, and they were able to reverse engineer pretty much the definitive version of this plate after studying videos and pictures of it posted by other Lego influencers online. While it would have been really cool to get this one because all the influencers who got it actually even had a custom box with their names on it to go alongside the shrine itself, Totally understand that, again, they didn't send these out to everybody, so I just had to add this one to my collection because, you know me, Ninjago is probably my favorite ongoing LEGO theme. It's what I cover the most on the channel other than Bionicles, so I just had to get my hands on this absolutely beautiful work of art. Now, the great thing is I was able to order all of the pieces for this base for exactly $87.05 on Pick a Brick direct from LEGO. Now, if you were to order the pieces directly from Bricklink, I am sure that there is some way to optimize it to make it even cheaper. So I think I overpaid a little bit for some of the pieces, but I just wanted to get them all brand new from Lego, kind of like I was putting it together direct from Lego itself. So. I wanted all the pieces to be new and feel like it was a very fresh build to go alongside the set, but what I would recommend is if you are trying to piece it together, take the parts list, try to buy it all on Bricklink, but get some of these rarer parts on Pick a Brick. Like, I can guarantee you that these weird, like, Lego Harry Potter book tile pieces, which some of you might not have even seen before, they were released just, I believe, last year for the Harry Potter book sets around March of last year, those are probably almost certainly going to be cheaper on Pick a Brick as compared to Bricklink. There's a couple of other pieces pieces integrated into this, like I'm sure maybe these like Dark Tan, Kylo Ren, CCBS lightsaber pieces are also probably going to be cheaper on Pick a Brick in bulk. Same with the fish tiles, as well as a couple of these 2x2 two two Lego Minecraft clear jumper pieces. So again, just be smart about how you purchase the pieces. I wanted to get mine direct from Lego, but that doesn't mean that you have to get yours as well. Now placing the model on top of it is really 
where the magic happens here because as you can see this base was made for this model. I mean, literally, the base was made for the model. It's meant to be displayed alongside the Dragonstone Shrine. And what's really cool is that you've got all sorts of really small and intricate details that just add on to the overall vibe of the set itself. If you look over here, you actually have a pool of water cascading down the side of the set that is kind of causing some ripples in the water on the base itself, and you have the exact same thing back here. There's a little bit of a water flow going outside of this kind of rock area that has maybe a little bit of a hole in it, a crevice to allow the water to flow through, and you've got some bubbles emerging from there, and that is just so, so beautiful to me how they were able to factor that into a full-on display base for this model. And I personally am very glad I was able to piece this one together because I feel like it kind of makes the model feel complete. What I will say though is that this base is absolutely not something that's designed for the average consumer to just build and put together. It involves a lot, and I mean a lot of just very intricate layering of tiles over and over and over again. You've got a ton of 1x4 clear blue tiles, and then intermixed with tons of 1x2s and even just studs here and there and petals that have fallen into the water from the tree just to make it just so much more detailed and make it feel like the water is flowing. It feels like a mock. Like, this feels like a mock expansion to an already amazing set, but it's really cool because this was actually designed by the same designer who made the set, designed the base, Lee Chi Wing, aka City Sun Creation on Instagram, which while I'm at it, I've also linked his Instagram down in the description below, where he put out a really insightful series on everything that goes into developing sets like these. So if you're curious about the development process, I highly recommend you check that out because it's probably some of the most in-depth information we've ever gotten about the development process of single Lego sets maybe even ever before. So I highly, highly recommend you give him a follow on Instagram. Super insightful. He's also been posting like 3D models of all the new pieces, so that's really cool. Anyways, I'll stop gushing about that Instagram account because I just love it when LEGO designers actually get to share their thoughts, and I even got to meet him when I saw the set early back in September for Fan Media Days. But enough about the base and about the behind the scenes of the set, I think it's time that we take a look at the set itself. Now for this review, I'm going to remove all the minifigures for now so we can take a look at the minifigures separately and just focus on in on the build itself because this is absolutely stunning. Besides the Ninjago City sets, this is really one of the only times where LEGO has gone out of their way to make a LEGO Ninjago set that is designed for older fans, and they explicitly said that this is meant to be for older fans of the show, and I love that Ninjago is at a point where they can design sets with that intention in mind. Yes, there is a play feature that is built in, sliding this rock back and forth here will allow you to tip this kind of battle rock back and forth so if you want to have a battle on the rock itself you could cause that to have an action sequence happening in the set itself but to be honest it's kind of something that i think was clearly put in just to make it an entertaining model for kids whereas mostly this was designed to be primarily something that adults can really just enjoy displaying and i feel like that's why in the AFL community so many people have gravitated towards having this display base built around it because it just adds so so much to the build itself. Now, on the exterior, this is pretty much just a large sculpture. Yes, you can articulate the arms somewhat, but I don't really think it's meant to be articulated. It's kind of just meant to be a part of the sculpture itself, and I just love the composition of the set. City Sun Creation, aka Lychee Wing, shared the initial design on a piece of paper. He kind of sketched this out, showing the tree stretching in the middle of this curved dragon with the roots winding around the side of the rock, and he really captured it in this set. It is absolutely beautiful. Just a huge fan of the way this all comes together, utilizing all sorts of different pieces from those older Lego dinosaur tail and elephant trunk pieces to some of the newer roots and even the Technic macaroni beams to have the shaping of the vines creeping around the rocks is just so good. And I love how you have this water flowing out of the dragon itself, kind of giving it this mystical quality. Like, where is that water coming from? The eyes are aglow. There's kind of a transparent blue aspect to the eyes itself. So all in all, just an absolutely beautiful set. 
I love the way it is done. You even have one of those specialized printed lantern pieces as well hanging on the tree, which was first introduced in the previous temple that we got last year, and it just all ties together into truly a tranquil and beautiful scene. I almost don't want to stage a battle on this rock because I feel like it disrupts like the beauty of the scene itself, where everything is just so mystical, and it feels like this is a place where you would go to meditate, and you would balance on the rock, and you can even imagine if your ninja minifigures are like training, and they're kind of trying to find their zen here, you can have, say, the Master Lloyd minifigure just kind of balancing on one leg atop this rock right here. You kind of slowly tilt him back and forth like he's balancing there, and oh my goodness, this is just so serene, and you really just have a beautiful scene that they have put together for this Ninjago set. And honestly, I'll have to say that aside from the Ninjago cities, this may be one of my favorite, if not my favorite, LEGO location-based Ninjago set maybe ever, and that is saying something because we've gotten a lot of beautiful temples and all sorts of different types of builds over the years, but this, this is just something else. Now, there actually is a full-on interior in the set as well, so I'd love to take a look at that. Of course, while building the set, one thing I want to mention is there are a couple of different Easter eggs scattered in the build. There is the Teapot of Tyran, which is factored into the build, which the designer said was actually kind of just a coincidence because he had to include the alternate version of the hinge, which is used to attach the head. Typically, when LEGO design sets, they always make it such that you can use the pieces for something else. So if they put in, like a left angle here. They want to make sure that there are exactly the same amount of right angles so you can actually build something else with the pieces. And especially with a piece like the hinge, which kind of goes with another hinge piece, it was a mandate from LEGO to try to include the other angle of the hinge in the set to make it useful for people to be able to use the parts for their own stuff. And because of that, he was able to factor it in. You can't even see it when it's done, but the Teapot of Tyran from Ninjago Skybound is in the base of this build, and an even more abstract reference is that as you're building the base and the interior structures of the build, there are bright colored pieces in the primary colors of the original six ninja factored into the build itself to really make it feel like the ninja's essence is inside the build, which is just a really nice touch. Now moving onwards to the aforementioned interior, this is just a really nice area to have some scrolls, there's a candle, and yes, the Chi Crystal is an intentional reference, and that was before the designer even knew that Lord Raz is from the same realm as Chima, that was just a very happy coincidence because the designers weren't really necessarily given those story details, but it was just really funny because they were like, well now that the realms have merged, why not throw a Chi Crystal in the set? Do I expect Chi to now appear in Dragon's Rising Season 2? I mean, probably not. Never say never, and like, the chances are more likely than ever, but I think it's just a nice easter egg to factor in, and you've just got a really nice almost cave entrance here where the scrolls are kept. Moving upwards to the next level here, you can see a lot more detail in terms of the stickers and the pieces included in the set. You have a T area for Master Wu, and who knows if Wu will even appear in the show in this outfit. Like, Wu might be non-canon, because as far as we know, he's a spirit now, so I wouldn't be surprised if this was just kind of something they threw in for set fans, and he doesn't even appear in the show. But we do have all these really nice details of this building in particular, which really excites me because... For those who don't know, there is a rumored Tournament Temple City, so we are getting a Ninjago City modular expansion later this summer. I would be surprised if it wasn't this. Like, this to me feels like a hint towards a future set, and if so, oh my goodness, that set is going to be absolutely fire, because... This build already looks so good, and there's nothing that really corresponds to this particular building in Ninjago's previous set, so it's not like it's a reference to anything unless it's a hint towards something coming in the future, but I guess we have to wait and see for the summer to see if that's true. Moving onwards to here, we have a scroll that I'm assuming is going to be a little bit more plot relevant. It shows a dragon and a sensei kind of obtaining some mysterious scroll there, and I do wonder if that has to do with the action feature or kind of play feature built into this area, because you actually have what really is cool is when you push in one of the books in the bookcase. Literally, you push in one of the books, and as you push it in... This newly recolored General Grievous Starfighter windscreen element in dark gray opens up and you have some mysterious book that's been included in the set. We don't know any story details yet at the time of recording this video. The season 2 of Ninjago Dragons Rising is not out yet, but this looks almost sinister. It looks kind of menacing in the way it's done. Could this be a hint to Shatter Spin, which is something that we know is going to play a major role in the new season? 
we'll have to wait and see, but this does have so much prominence to it that I almost feel like, yeah, sometimes the sets are not super accurate when it comes to story details, but this is a very unique feature for it to have that. So I'm not really sure if that's just something the set designers threw in for fun, or maybe it'll be integrated into the story, but we'll see. It is just a nice little Easter egg either way. Now, all in all, this is, again, really a beautiful set. And altogether, with the base, it's around $200, but of course the base set is $120. And I do feel like that is where a lot of the complaints about the set come in, because as beautiful as it is, a lot of people online have said that, well, it doesn't really feel like this is worth $120. And to that I say, by the volume of stuff that you get, I can see where the complaints are coming from. And you know me, I am always one who is willing to call out LEGO if they make sets overpriced. I absolutely ripped into the Hoopty and the X-Men Jet earlier this year for being like stupidly overpriced. And I'm more than willing to call out LEGO, even if I get sent something for free, which I haven't gotten in a while, but even if they do send something, I'm more than willing to call it out if it's overpriced. But this, to me, doesn't really feel that overpriced. And I do understand why people think that. It's because if you compare it, like, in my hands, it feels like maybe an $80 set. Like, if you ignore all the details, and if you just feel the size of the set, I'm seeing, like, $80, maybe $90. But the thing is, this again has 1,212 pieces packed in, and they're packed in for a reason. It's because this is one of the most detailed Ninjago sets ever. They have so much intricate detail from the way the water bubbles are pooling down here, to the way the rock work is done in all sorts of unique asymmetrical shapings, and the way the tree is built even. Like, you have so many intricate details factored into the build itself. That's the reason why this is so expensive, and... To me, this is almost the epitome of, you know how when people make mocks and you're like, oh, mockets do so much better than Lego designers because they make something really big and really detailed and it just looks so much better than official Lego sets. And then you sit down and are like, oh wow, this is gonna cost me like $1,000 to build because it's not price optimized like a lot of Lego sets are to cut down a little bit on the detail to just make it more reasonable for a price point. This almost feels like, in the best way possible, I've bought somebody's mock. Like, I feel like this is... It almost doesn't feel like a real set to me. It's almost too good to be a Ninjago set. You know what I mean? Like, the rock work is so advanced. You have so many studs in the side and intricate building techniques factored into the set itself. It is almost too good to be an actual LEGO set, and I feel like that's where a lot of the complaints about value are coming in. Because people are used to $120 LEGO sets having just much more volume than this does. I mean, literally in the same wave, we have the Wolf Mass Shadow Dojo, which by volume is so much bigger than this, right? But it's also very thin, there's not a ton of detail in it, and not to rag on the set, I do think this is a good set, but this is more what I would expect for an $120 LEGO set, right? It's a very thin, sort of facade type of build, you don't have a ton going on, but then for $120 to get this, like, the most incredibly detailed Tranquil Dragon sculpture that I've ever seen in an official set, it's throwing people for a loop, and it's making people feel like it's not worth the price, I think especially because it is so detailed and all of that parts budget just goes into making it look so good. So to each your own. And I definitely would say that if you do not feel that paying $120 is worth it for this model, don't pay $120. Nobody is forcing you to get something that you don't want. For me, I do feel like it is worth it, and I do feel like this set in particular, in combination with the base, if you manage to get the parts for the base, and then you're really cooking, right? Like, then you have really a masterpiece of a set right here. But not everybody is going to do that, and I totally understand that, and I'm just really curious to see what people think of the model in general, and yeah, I'm sure a lot of people in the comments are going to be like, hey look, I get the point, or maybe I don't get the point, but this is just, there's no way this is worth 120, and I completely respect that opinion, you know? To each their own, I just feel like this is just a very fundamentally different set compared to a lot of other buildings that we get from LEGO. It almost feels like a Monkey Kid set, in a really good way. I mean, it's even more detailed than a lot of other MK sets out there. And because of that, I do feel like people are feeling like the value is not there. So it is what it is. It's almost a little bit unfortunate that this is so good, that so many parts go into making it detailed, that the value doesn't feel worth it. So again, it really just boils down to your own preferences. But for me, this is one of my favorite Ninjago sets of all time. And I do not say that lightly. This is truly one of the greats. 
And now, let's take a look at all the minifigures that are included in the set itself, because there's a lot of really cool stuff that I want to showcase when it comes to the minifigures themselves. Of course, we have to start off with Master Lloyd as the minifigure included in the set. Now, we did get Master Lloyd in the $10 battle pack back in January, but this one is unique because he has a brand new armor element, which is really nice. I mean, obviously, this is the same armor piece we got for Sons of Garmadon, but it is cool that they added it onto the minifigure. The only thing I feel like this minifig is missing now is a cape, and honestly... I'm kind of surprised they didn't include a cape in the set. It feels like the graphic design was literally meant for him to have a cape. You can see it's like he was meant to have a dark orange cape because you've got the clasp on there to hold the cape together. But for whatever reason, he doesn't actually have a cape. Maybe they're saving it for the summer wave. Who knows? But feels like a bit of a missed opportunity to me. Otherwise, this is a really nice looking minifigure. I don't have really much else to say about it other than what I said about it when I first covered it back in January, but I do like the built up weapon. He kind of has this kind of longer Naginata type thing, or maybe I'm, I'm having that wrong name of the weapon there, but he's got the long kind of end of his sword on a long stick, which is really nice, almost like a samurai style. So it's really cool to see him get an upgraded weapon like this. And I feel like it fits the master aesthetic where he has this staff like weapon, but with a blade on the end. And then you have this special printed, almost like a letter with a seal on it. Who knows if that's going to be relevant in the show, but it's a cool accessory and overall a really nice minifig. Moving on to Master Wu. Honestly, Wu is just alright. I feel like this one doesn't necessarily feel that exciting to me for Master Wu. I would have loved to get a more weird version of him. Like, it would have been really interesting to get a spirit version of Master Wu. Like, imagine if we got, like, the gold beard and had, like, more mystical energy around him and maybe change the head. I know they can't make a fully transparent minifigure, but it would have been interesting to get something more unique compared to what we got here, which just feels like another version of Wu, especially because I highly doubt that this will even appear in the show, and honestly, I kind of hope it doesn't. I feel like Wu as a character has played his course, and I much prefer him to be in kind of a mystical spirit form as opposed to a regular human form, because now we want to have Master Lloyd take on that role, but as a minifigure itself for Wu, it's not bad, but nothing super exciting. I still think my favorite Wu is either the one from the Ninjago movie or the one that they did for season 11 where he had that beautiful cape. Moving onwards to probably the most exciting minifigure in the set for a lot of folks, this is Euphrasia. Now Euphrasia does come with a hairpiece as well, so you can put the hairpiece on if you want, but I do prefer to have her with the hood because I do feel like it works so much better having her be seen in the show like this. So. This is a nice looking minifigure in general, however, I will say that the facial expression, I don't know if it necessarily fits the character that we saw in the show, she did have a pretty generic facial expression and I really do like how they're trying to at least suggest some different races being introduced into the world. Like the voice actress of Euphrasia is African American to my knowledge and they really tried to kind of bring that out with the facial expression here which they typically use to kind of code characters a certain race and the hairpiece also suggests that which is really nice. I am all for more diversity in the Ninjago world but Unfortunately, because of that, the head does feel a little bit generic compared to a lot of other characters, especially Elemental Masters we've gotten in the past. The robes are really nice, but a lot of people weren't super happy with the minifigure because they were hoping for something a little bit more unique, and I understand that. But I still think it is a really nice minifigure. I do like the design of the character, and I'm excited to see what role she plays in the future season. Moving onwards, Kai and Nia are probably the least interesting minifigures in the set because they literally are just their Dragon's Rising variants from Season 1. Not even the brand new Climber outfits, which I think would have been really cool to include because Climber Nia, as it is right now, only appears in one set, so I think it would have been really cool to get another copy of her in this set so folks could get it with this set, but I guess they were trying to do something a little bit different with this one in particular, and they gave, gave us the hair pieces, the dual molded ones, which are really nice, they complement the suits really well, but these are just not the most exciting figures because they're a repeat of what we got last year, just with the hair instead of the hood. Lord Roz is another repeat from the January wave, but I think he looks really menacing and cool. Unfortunately, I was wondering where his printed arms went. On the side of all the box art, he has printed arms, and we were actually shown a version of him with printed arms that was supposed to come in this set. They decided not to do it after all, so I'm not really sure what happened with that, but maybe they're saving the printed arm Roz for like a special one-off set, like maybe that large tournament that's rumored, the Tournament City set that's rumored for this summer is going to be the only one that has printed arms Roz. 
So it is a bit disappointing to have a minifigure that is clearly not the perfect version of the character as what he should be, but I'm excited to see if we will get another outfit of him in the future, and maybe that one will have the printed arms, because that was a really big standout aspect of his character, and I feel like it made those pink stripes on the head feel a little less isolated and feel more like they flowed with the character itself. Otherwise though, I do like the color scheme, I feel like it even fits him better than the Imperium one, and I'm curious to see if we'll continue to get more Raz variants in future years. Altogether, that sums up my thoughts on the minifigure selection for this set, and overall, kind of sums up my thoughts on the set as a whole. Again, very happy with the set, I think this is beautiful, I think it's one of the best Ninjago sets ever made, but you may disagree and I'm curious to hear your thoughts. That's all for now, hope you enjoyed this special look and review of not just the LEGO set, but also the additional LEGO influencer base that they included in the set itself, and hopefully that makes it easy for folks who are not influencers, or who are an influencer like me but didn't get it, to be able to build it themselves and enjoy it like everybody else. That's all for this, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching our review of the Dragonstone Shrine. All right, and with that, we have summed up our look at the Dragonstone Shrine. Let me know down in the comments below what do you think of the set. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? And what do you think of that special add-on base as well? I think it really does help tie the scene together, and it feels like it could be pretty easy to make it actually fit in with the other Ninjago modular buildings. Imagine actually attaching the Dragonstone Shrine to one of these buildings and kind of making it feel like a natural park or extension. If I ever get more room in my city, I definitely know that's something I would love to do because this is a beautiful set. Set. But of course the price is admittedly a little bit high for what you actually get in the set itself So you do have to consider that as well. That's all for this review Thank you so much for tuning in be sure to like and subscribe for even more Lego news reviews discussion and analyses coming away very soon and bye for now